All right, so welcome uh, to Management Decision and Control by Samuel Ivanda. And today we want to look at uh, a question on ABC, uh, which is uh, activity based costing. So, activity based costing uh, basically looks at costs from the perspective of activities. And while we have activity based costing, Activity-based costing was basically come up with because of the inefficiencies that came with the traditional costing method. So what, what is it that a traditional costing method focused on that ABC tries to improve? Now, the traditional costing method focused so much on two generic determinants or generic uh, determinants of uh, ratios to allocate our fixed cost because in the two methods, the traditional uh, ABC, our focus or our, what, what we are trying to basically understand is how to allocate our fixed costs. Now, if you're in an organization, let's say Coca-Cola and you're producing juice, you're producing soda, you're producing water, the variable costs are very easy for you to allocate because the variable costs come directly. If it's water, the variable costs needs off to be the water, the bottles will be specifically for the water as a product. But then there, because these products are produced in the same environment, usually they are kept in the same warehouses, are usually the security people that are keeping them are the same. You find a point of time where you want to allocate also these overheads, which are fixed costs. Now, the reason, of course, again, why we do costing to make sure that we're getting the exact unit cost of the product that incorporates all the different costs that have been incurred is because in most times we base on the cost to determine the price. So if we have a wrong cost value, that means we're going to either price wrongly or we are going to, we're basically not going to have a picture on our costs vis-a-vis uh, -vis what you may be, let's say, uh, maybe getting from that product. So costing is very key. So when we are costing, like I said, the variable costs are very easy for us to cost them. But the challenge we have is on the overheads. Now, overheads, these are usually the fixed costs. And these are costs that don't change with the change in the output. Basically, they are not unit-based. It's not that when you produce 10 bottles, the fixed cost will go high. No, the fixed costs are usually, let's say the warehouse may be rent. Uh, fixed costs are the administration costs, okay? Because the managing data will always be around. Either you produce two bottles or produce three bottles, will always be around. It will go ahead to uh, things like, let's say, um, maybe uh, some element of lighting, okay? Because either you're lighting one, a room that has one box or light in a room that has two boxes to see remain the same. So you can have several overheads. But then the question is, how do I allocate, do I allocate and say, this is for soda, this is for juice, this is for what? So that is where now, uh, previously traditionally they use the labor hours. So they look at, let's say, how long in terms of labor it takes to produce, let's say, um, let's say soda and juice. And then they use that to reflect on how they reallocate uh, their fixed cost. So it means that one product that takes more labor hours, or if they're using machine hours, one that takes more machine hour, then they will, use, they will give it more of the fixed costs compared to the one that uses less. So that is how the procedure ways, how they use to allocate such costs. But now with ABC, our focus is not on the labor hours, our focus is not on the machine hours, our focus is on the activities that are involved for each of the product, because activity-based costing believes that it is the activities that are the sources of the costs. So it is from the activities that the costs now start coming through. And that's why you see, uh, we also have an element called cost drivers when it comes to ABC. So when it comes to activity-based costing, we're trying to look at activities to be the key starting point for any cost, okay? And that's when where we also get down to look at what are the cost drivers, okay? 
after identifying, let's say, our activities. So what are the cost drivers within those activities? Okay, so that is very important. So that is where ABCO comes from, from the inefficiencies of the tradition. So this question is going to give us an insight of how to go uh, about uh, ABC whenever we uh, have a scenario, either it's a practical scenario in your time at your office, or you have this uh, maybe in a question like in the exam. So a, this question, it's um, in March 2021, uh, and uh, it is question two, March 2021 of the CPA uh, question paper, uh, management decision and control, so it's question two. As we're going to see question two right here. So here it says, so it says that Enterprise Uganda Limited Enterprise Uganda Limited. Maybe I'll just uh, try to see if I can. Okay, it's okay. So Enterprise Uganda Limited was established in 2014 by a group of farmers in Chengegwa district to engage in agro processing for value addition and high profitability. So EUL produces a range of products, among which is cassava flour, starch, and dairy feeds. So this is what we are trying to look at as at their products they have. They're telling us that EU, EUL's managing director attended the workshop organized by the Institute of Certified Public Accountants in February 2021, where facilitators explained the relevance of business process engineering and activity-based costing systems in improving performance. The facilitators indicated the pitfalls of traditional costing system in regards to determination of product profitability. The MD shared with the accountant about the concepts, about the above concepts, and both agreed to adjust the tra from traditional costing system to every system to us to see how product profitability would change. So the accountant decided to perform a payload using the accounting information put there in the 31st December 2020. All overhead costs under traditional costing were charged to the product using direct labor hours, just like the way I explained. So traditional costing is more generic like based on labor hours. So that is what uh, they used to do. So they are telling us that below is the accounting information extract related to the three products, that is cassava, starch, and daily feeds. So we have output, which is 850, uh, 100, and then 800,000. Then and I hear now they go ahead to tell us uh, the direct labor hours. This one has 850, 1000, and then 400. They also give us the selling price, as you can see, for the different products. Now, one of the things that I want to share with you is that the reason why it's not even good to use lab direct labor hours when it comes to uh, charging overheads uh, on different products is because. You can find a product like this. So we can see here that uh, this product is 1,500 and this product is 16,000. So you see, you see that a product of 1,500 takes averagely in terms of hours, not so much different from a product that is, is, is priced at 16,000. So what will happen? It will happen that the overhead costs that are shared on two cassava flour will not be so much different from the one of starch because the difference is just 250 hours. So you're going to see that um, the two are going to get, uh, for example, this one is going to get overhead costs that are very high compared to even what we are getting from it because each unit is sold at 1,500. Yet this one is sold at a higher value. So this one may be of a higher value because the activities involved in getting this product where it is could be uh, maybe activities that of a higher cost. So when you use activity -based costing, activity based costing, you are going to get a true allocation of what there would be overhead costs. Okay, so we can see this. So that is why the traditional that is based on the hours is not really proper. Then we have the material cost per kg, which is 960, 11, 050, 155. Then we have material purchase orders, 30, 20, 70, 
sales orders, 500, 300, 200. And then we have machine maintenance frequency, 100, 250, then 50. Then when you get down, we have 63, 750, 30, 1090, okay? That's what we have. And then we have overhead costs. Now, the overhead costs are those general costs, what I, I call the fixed costs that cut across all the products. Now, one of the things that you need to realize whenever you're given such a question is that you need to understand which one Okay, somebody says there's an echo sound as I present. Do, I, do we all get this echo sound? If I need to change something? Is it the same for other people? Or oh, it's fine. You can hear me clearly without an echo. Can somebody confirm? Can somebody help confirm if there is an issue? Ah, uh, I can hear you clearly. Okay, fine. I think uh, uh, Justin says it is there. I don't know why what echo sound would be, uh, but what you could what we could what you could try is uh, I don't know if it's an issue of network. Okay. I think you may need to try it because one person can hear me clearly, so it could be an issue. Is it the same thing? Godfrey, do you hear the same thing? Is it an echo as well for him, from your side, Godfrey? I mean, I'm suggesting, I don't know. Hello? Yes, Henry. Like uh, when when you talk, like there is like a hissing sound that follows your communication. Eh? Much as we can hear, but it becomes like an interruption. So I, I don't know whether it's the network where you're seated, because Justin you know, is also hinting it. Much as we can hear, but then it becomes an interruption. Ah, uh, okay. No, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a computer issue. It's a computer issue. Sorry for sorry about that. All right, I think let's proceed. Uh, I, I think it will, it will get more with time, time, if you can hear me. Yeah, we are. Okay, fine, thank you so much. All right, uh, so I was trying to uh, share something when it comes to the information that we've been provided here, that uh, as we can see, most, most of what we are, are having here, the direct labor, uh, the material, this gives us basically the variable costs. Basically gives us the variable cost. Well, as now the overheads, are, these are the fixed costs. So usually here, our whatever we are going to basically do is to try to allocate these costs. And that's where the traditional method and the ABC come in. So the company is now using a, a traditional and they want to move to I uh, use ABC. So moving down, they tell us that all the direct labor hours is paid at 15,000 per hour. Overhead costs will be absorbed to products using direct labor hours. So they're telling us you're the accountant at EUL required, advise the MD of EUL on whether the product whether they should adopt AB system. And then they also want you to explain the process of implementing the business process engineering. So as we can see, they want us to advise them whether they should adopt the AB system. So one of the things that you get realized when it comes to uh, MDC, like we earlier say that this paper is more of decision-making. That's why it is called management decision and control. So as a student, the question may not directly tell you to use ABC in calculating, let's say, the cost. But here they're asking you whether they should adopt the ABC system. And they are giving this 
14 marks. So what you need to basically understand here is that examiner expects you to use ABC, get its results, and compare it with the existing, say, traditional method. Because right here, they have given you the net profit as per the traditional method. So yours is to test this and use the ABC method so that you able to, again, find what would have been the profit if you're using the ABC method. Because uh, at the end of the day, remember what uh, they told us about the recommendation because they're saying the MD shared with the accountant about, about the above concepts and they both agreed to adjust from the traditional posting system to ABC system. So as to see how product profitability would change. So yours is to implement what they are, uh, what they are trying to drive to. So yours is to drive and find what is the new profitability for the products. So that is what we are going to basically do. And every time you're given such information, because one of the things that when you go through ABC uh, in terms of the, uh, the training content, the, the class content, you get to realize that ABC has certain steps on to which uh, if an organization is to use ABC, we have certain steps that we, we, we follow before we, we adopt ABC. So, and one of them is the identification of the activities. Now, as, uh, as we can see here, you get to realize that they have not really given us the activities there, but you, see, you can see that one of the activities is material handling and one of the other activities is machinery repair and maintenance. One of the other activity is selling and distribution. Another activity is, uh, uh, is, is, is now under, let's say, maybe other overhead. So it would include other activities that have costing attached to them. So one of the, fa the first step is to identify the activities. And then the second step is to determine what causes the cost on each of the activity, which we usually call the cost driver. Now, these costs that we have been given follow under the third step, which is you create a cost pool for each activity. So you basically accumulate all the costs that are under a given activity. So that is why at the end of the day, after accumulating all the costs under material handling, you come to what we call the material handling costs. That is, this is the cost pool. So what we have been provided to us here is basically the cost pool. Now, the cost driver has also been provided for us. For example, for material handling costs, our cost driver is the material purchase orders. Now, I want you to, to see something here. Usually, the examiner will give you this cost driver. Sometimes they will tell you these are cost drivers. Sometimes they will not tell you that these are cost drivers. But if you know that whenever I'm using ABC, I need to have the cost pool, basically the total costs that are on each uh, cost pool. But in the same way, I need the cost drivers on each of the cost pool. So for example, this is uh, material handling costs. Now, when you look at these cost drivers, because direct labor hours, this one is more information for the direct costs. Even material costs are, is also information for the direct costs. Selling price, this one we shall use it most, especially when we are looking at profitability, because when you get the selling price and re reduce it by the total cost, you should be able to get the profitability. Now, when we come here, they have given us material purchase orders. Yours is to ask yourself, why have they given me this information and where will I actually use this information? So as you look at your overhead costs here, you should get back yourself, uh, your eyes back on this and see what do I have here that is provided that would best suit to be my cost driver. So as we can see, if we have the material handling costs, then you know that if I'm to go back here and I see material purchase orders, then this one is much more likely to be the cost driver for my material handling costs. The same thing with, let's say, um, when it comes to, let's say, sales orders. When you see sales orders, 
and you see posts like uh, make sure you mute when you see sales orders and then you see selling and distribution costs then in your judgment the selling and distribution costs should be looked at from the perspective of sales orders because the more the sales orders that you have the more the selling and distribution costs and this again will not be so much different from the machinery repairs and maintenance so we have machine maintenance frequency so what does this mean you just ask yourself is there any relationship between this and the machinery repairs and maintenance yes the higher the frequency basically the higher the number of times that you're doing the uh, the machine repairs or the machine maintenance the higher your machinery repair and maintenance costs so I, I hope we can be able to appreciate when it comes to that, um, when we are looking at areas of what? Areas of how to allocate our overheads, okay? Because that is the most critical part. For you to be able to relate what cost driver best suits what, okay? That is uh, very, very important because at the end of the day, uh, you want to make sure that you're allocating all costs are uh, in the right way, okay? So that is uh, very important for us to take into consideration. Now, somebody will ask themselves, what about the overhead costs? What would be the cost driver? If you have your overhead costs, because they have told us, um, so they are telling us that all overhead costs under traditional costing were charged to the products using the elect labor hours. So then that is under traditional. But since we are now moving to ABC, if you have other overhead costs, okay? If you have other overhead costs, you just ask yourself, what would I best use to allocate my Overhead costs, the other overhead costs, whom we couldn't easily do it, find um, an appropriate cost driver. So in that case, what we shall do with other overhead costs, for it, we shall still uh, use the direct labor hours because we don't have what you would call the so-called cost driver to the overhead costs. So once we are done with uh, doing that, uh, what we proceed to do, uh, remember they told us to advise management on whether to use ABC. So what we are going to do now is to calculate and see how to allocate our costs uh, based on ABC. So one of the things that you need to realize is um, whenever we are looking at uh, scenarios like this one, where there's an element of cost, where there are, there's an element of um, uh, cost divided into our fixed cost and variable costs, we usually use what is called the profit statement, okay? We usually use what is called the profit statement. And the profit statement basically is going to look at uh, the sales, okay, in terms of uh, uh, what are we earning in terms of uh, from the sale, sales of the product, that is the selling price. And then we shall look at aspects of the, co the different costs that we have. So that is what we are basically going to, to do. So coming here, uh, so since we have agreed that uh, we're now going to draw up a profit statement, so we are going to list our different products that we have, okay? So the question told us we have cassava flour. Cassava flour. And then we have another product which is starch.
And then the other product we had was the Elephix. Daily fits, daily fit, daily fits like this. That is what we basically have. So we are going to look at whatever we're going to look at has to be within those respective uh, products. So we have some information that we have been given uh, from uh, those uh, respective products. But when you come back to your question, you get to realize that uh, for these products, as they have given us here, we have some information that we have. But then what are we driving to? What we are driving to is we want to determine what would be the would-be profit for cassava starch and dairy feeds if we are using the ABC. Now, one thing that we have to realize is when we are calculating the cost, uh, the total cost of the product, because already we have the selling price. So our dilemma is more on the cost. And that is where ABC comes. ABC comes from the cost. So when we are using ABC, we look at the variable costs, which are calculated not in any way different from even the traditional method. And then we calculate the overheads based on now ABC. So right here, the first I think we have to look at uh, our so-called variable costs to determine based on what we have been given, what would be our variable costs. Now, variable cost, I said we are going to look at two things. We are going to look at our, our direct labor because direct labor cost is a variable cost, okay? And then we are going to look at our materials, okay? And then they have told us that, uh, one, they have told us that direct labor hours, these are the ones that we have, which is 850, 1,400. And then down here, they have gone ahead to give us the elect labor is paid at a rate of 15,000. It's paid at the rate of 15,000. So what does, what does that mean? So what I'll basically go ahead to do, um, is I'll just uh, pick the, the, the elect labor cost. So I'll just come here and say, I'm first going to look at the daily level. Okay, I can say variable costs. And then I'm going to variable cost, I'm going to look at my direct labor. Okay. So in determining my direct labor costs, I'm going to look at the direct labor hours the labor hours and I'll get also the direct labor hour rate. The direct labor hour rate. Because to get the direct labor cost, I need to get the direct labor hours times the direct labor hour rate. So I've been given from the information I've been given here, I've been given the number of hours. So I'll just uh, try to copy this and put it to my Excel. Okay, like that. So the direct labor rate is the same across because they gave it to me. They say that the direct, uh, the direct labor is all 15,000. So it is across despite the product. 15,000. Like that. So that is what I basically do have in this day too, okay? So if I want to get the, the, the leg labor cost, the leg labor cost, will be this times this. So that is what I basically have, okay? That is what I basically have. Now, one of the things that you also need to understand here, and this is from, again, interpretation, 
the when we are looking at let's say the ABC we are looking at here, this information they have provided us, okay, is information usually uh, that is looking at a unit product, okay. This information is more looking at from the perspective of a unit product. I hope you able to, to get that. So it's more from the perspective of a unit product, not the overall, uh, not, not the overall say, uh, including what units they are produced. So profit statement is on a unit product, it's on a unit product, okay? So after I've gotten my direct labor, I'm not, I now want to look at my material cost. So for material costs, what we are going to look at, they have given us, they have actually given us the material costs package, which is 960, um, 11, 050 and 155. That is what they have uh, basically given us. But now um, we need also to understand that they, they went ahead to give us, um, uh, they went ahead to give us the number of units, what we call the number of pages. So material cost per kg, is this by the number of pages output in terms of pages is this okay uh, when you uh because we have 850 as provided there and this one is subject to the 960 which is our individual rate okay so if you want to determine uh, what in terms of the total material cost there, then we are going to uh, go ahead to multiply the two figures. So let's have material. Yeah. Material cost. So we have the material cost package. So I'll just pick that. So that is what we uh, basically have. So then we shall in add the material, what we have, the output, okay? Because the output influences what we have as a total material cost. So that's why we bring in the output. So we bring here, say the output, which is in cages. So the output has also been provided at hand. So we just go and pick it. So this is the output. So the material costs, you can okay, you can call it total material costs. The material costs, or you can call it the direct material costs, same thing. Will now be this multiplied by that. Give you 816 million. That would be the same thing across these respective values. Okay. This would be one one zero five. I know the figures are uh, because they have uh, the million shilling. They look to be uh, broad, but uh, if you want to reduce this and you calculate it on your calculator, you can put a thousand here. 
so that you reduce on how they look like. But since we have more, we have used that starting from up, we can just proceed um, with those figures. But if you're in the exam and your, your paper is a bit more to capture all these values, then you might want to reduce it to that, okay? So once we have these figures now, like I said, these are like our direct material costs, okay? These are like uh, what we have as our direct material costs. So we can go ahead to add the two figures together. We can go ahead to add the two figures together, which is, um, you can call it total variable costs. This added to this. So those are the different variable costs we have, our total variable costs. So usually when we are calculating our, um, when we are doing a profit statement, remember we also have to consider the prices, okay? On to which we bought these products. So you can choose to include the selling prices. So I can include them here, or you, you could have started with them as well. That is also fine. And I'll just include here. So I says, uh, here I'm going to look at the selling revenue. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to first get my so-called contribution. Okay, because contribution is selling revenue minus the variable cost. Then from the contribution, you go ahead less the variable costs, the fixed costs, sorry, which are your overheads to determine your so-called net profit, okay? Uh, maybe just, uh, let me just use the same format since I have, uh, since my Excel allows, let me just try to put it here so that it, it, it doesn't confuse you. So let me put my selling revenue here. Let me, just, let, me, let, me, let me start it from here so that I can do this. And best understand it. So remember they gave us the selling price. Okay. They gave us the selling price of each of the products. And then for us to determine sales revenue, we also need the output. Basically the number of the units that we have. And remember, we already have these units, so I can put them here. They're in cages. So I'll just pick the selling price, which is uh, within the information given to me. So the selling price is here. So this is the selling price. Let's just start. So that is what we basically do have, okay? Um, so it means that if you have to get our selling revenue, or you can call it if it's revenue in itself, it will be this times this. Because of a big, like, like I said, in case you want to reduce on these thousands and using calculator, you can just put, you can work in a thousand. So you just put it in bracket here, thousands, and then you, you remove the thousands on this. So that's what we basically have. So now I can use this to do my contribution. So contribution is usually sell, the sales revenue minus the variable costs. So contribution will be basically equal to this minus this. So you, you get uh, 446, 250 right here. When you cascade down here, you should be able to get uh, the rest of 
should be able to get the rest of your so-called contribution. So this is the contribution. So contribution, like we, we, we know contribution is sales revenue minus total variable costs. If we are looking at a unit product, cont contribution per unit is selling price minus total variable cost. It minus unit variable cost or variable cost per unit. So from here, we proceed to look at our overheads, okay? Proceed to look at our overheads, which are our so called fixed costs. And uh, just like I said, reason why we are getting here is because at the end of the day, we want to determine the profitability using ABC. Now, from our question, you can see that these guys already gave us this profitability using traditional. This is the profitability. So for our goal is now to use ABC. And this is where ABC comes in because whatever I have done here, all this that I have done, uh, selling price, looking at the variable cost, this is even what somebody using traditional would do when they have not yet gotten to the fixed overheads. The only difference between traditional and ABC lies within the calculation of overhead costs, okay? So when it comes to um, ABC, we are now going to allocate these values. As you can see, 101, 250, uh, 202, 500. So these are total values for all the products. But now we want to allocate them to know this one is for customer. This one is for stash. This one is for daily feeds. And that is the goal of ABC. So what are we going to basically do for us to drive to uh, that uh, stage? We are definitely going to do a working. So I'll just come here, my Excel. And I'll just start a page of working. So my working is still going to focus on the products that I have, okay? So I'm going to do cassava, cassava flour as my product there. I'm going to have my starch, okay? The other product was dairy feeds. I'm going to have dairy feeds like that. So then what am I going to look at? Definitely here, I'm going to look at the variable costs or what you call, sorry, the overhead costs. The overhead cost. At hand. So the overhead cost that I have as listed in the exam are this, okay? Those are the overhead costs that I have. Let me try to copy that here. Okay. So let me just try to arrange this. Okay, so this, this is what I have. Now, where am I heading? Back, I just want to, to again take you just a little small on the process of our overhead, uh, when we are actually overheads based on ABC. So there's what we call the cost drivers, which we have seen. And then there's what we call cost pool, which we have been given. Now, if you have the cost pool, and then you have the cost drivers, then you can get what is called the absorption rate. You can get what is called the absorption rate. So ideally, the next step we are going to do here is to calculate the absorption rate for material handling costs, the absorption rate for machinery repairs, the absorption rate for much selling and distribution, and then overheads. So the formula, of course, definitely when we are calculating our absorption rate, 
what we are basically looking at is what do we have as our total overhead and what do we have as our total cost driver okay and then we're able to divide the two uh, together so Let's try to do this. Just want to put this in a table so that you can understand it a little better. Try to move this. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. So that is what uh, we basically have. Okay, this is our overhead cost. So we also have the cost driver. So let me just handle one by one so that you can uh, try to understand what, what I want to do. So this is the total, the total cost is this, okay? Now I have to get the total cost driver, the total cost driver, which we say that for material handling cost, the total cost driver is going to be based on the material purchase order. So I'm going to base on this and get the total, okay? So what I'm going to do, let me just pick the material purchase orders, but in terms of total, this is 30 plus 20, 50 plus 70, which is 120. So I'm going to come here These are material purchase order. And I'm going to say my total is how much? 120, okay? That is what I basically do have. Now, let's try to get what is called the absorption rate, okay? Which is looking at the total cost divided by our so-called total cost driver. So this will be this, okay, being divided by this. And this is going to give us, it's divided by this, my Excel will give me 843, Point seven five. Eight four three point seven five. So eight four three point seven five is my so called is what I'm getting here. But I mean, just 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 to uh, since here we are not working in uh, in in what in our so called um, thousands because when you look at this value, just look at it. These figures are in thousands. So for you to deal away with uh, these uh, so-called uh, point, point 0.75, it's better for you to use the thousands as they are. So as you can see, this has changed to now 8.43750. So 8.43750 is our cost driver rate. Now, again, I want you to look critically here. So that is for material handling. So after we've gotten our cost driver rate, then how do we determine what needs to go to a server flat? How do we determine what of this so-called 
101 to 50 goes to the cassava plant. Now, one thing that we need to understand here, okay? One thing we, we need to understand that the cassava flour has a cost driver, okay? And the cost driver for cassava flour, looking at this, is how much? We see that for material purchase here is uh, 30, okay? We basically have 30 there. And then we have 20 and 70 on the other side. So if you have, let's say, your so-called rate here, how do you calculate to determine the portion of cassava flour for, for this cost, okay? That is what we want to uh, basically determine here because at the end of the day, that is what is going to give us uh, what we are looking for. And that's why we are doing all this, okay? So let's just uh, try to calculate. Just a moment. Let's try to calculate here. So um, once we have this, once we've gotten the rate, which we have gotten, which is 843,750, and we want to determine what we have for cassava flour. Now we have seen that for cassava flour, we have that the other side. So this rate basically means that for every cost, for every unit of a cost driver, this is the cost that is, is incurred. For every unit of the cost driver, because this is cost per each cost driver. So each unit of the material purchase order, basically each purchase order costs us 843,750. So what this means that if cassava has 30 as the cost driver, okay? For us to determine the total cost under cassava here, it will be basically 30 times the 843,750, 843,750, which gives us this, uh, this value, which is 25. So if I want to get for starch, what I'll basically do, I'll just come here and see what do I have on starch. Starch, I have 20. I'll just come here. and do 20 times the 843, just do 843,750, like that. So it gets me to 16,875. Then daily fits, I'll do this was, I think, 70, 70 times 843, Seven fifty, like that, it will get me to five fifty six fifty nine zero six two. I want you to observe something small. 
So this is how we've allocated them under cassava flour, starch, and dairy feeds. So let's see something here. When you add these two values, when you add these values again, you get realized that they will come back to your total material handling cost. So this has just been a way to allocate them across the respective products. So that is how we have done it, okay? That is how we have done it. So basically here, you're calculating, you're multiplying the cost driver value times the cost driver rate right down here. So that's what we are going to do even for the rest of the other. So let's just see, uh, you can't even put here, so just to confirm. It's better to, for you to confirm there to know that you've done the right things. So we're going to see something here. So this is the material. So the total cost for this, is that I would add the three zeros since uh, they had the three zeros, then the total cost driver now in this case is not much, it's not material. I'll just try to get it from here. Here we have machine maintenance. Have machine maintenance, let me just copy everything here. I don't have here. Just pick material, machine maintenance. That is what we basically have. Now the material maintenance, I'll just add the 100 plus 250 plus 50. This is 300, this is 400. So this is 400. The total cost driver for machine is 300, is 400. The 250 plus this, this is 300 plus the 100 gives you. 400. So that's the total cost driver. So now I can get my absorption rate. Okay. So my absorption rate here will be this divided by that. And this will give me this divided by this will give me 506250. So what that means is that when I'm when I want to get um, my machine repairs and maintenance costs, I'm going to get the cost driver times this value that I have gotten down here. So my cost driver, my cost driver will be My cost driver for cassava flour, I'll just come back here. Uh, cassava flour has 100. So I'll get 100 times the value I got, okay? So it will be basically 100 times this value. So I'll just do 100. Since I'm using Excel, I'll just link this. So it's the time was that. So it's basically, you get 50. Six two five something like that. That's what I have, and then I'll do the same thing for starch. When you come back here, you have two fifty. So I'll get two fifty and multiply it with still the same value I've gotten. So this times what I have here um this value then daily feeds i'll pick daily feeds is 50 so i'll do 50 times 506 250 506 250 same amount i'll get that and then i'll test and see if it adds up yes i get 202 500 which is exactly this so i've been able to allocate it across respective product so selling and distribution i'll do the same thing i'll also calculate the cost driver and then so i'll put it here so total cost for selling at that distribution is this with three zeros on it one two three 
And then this, the first driver here is not this, okay? It's rather we have a cost driver given to us, which is um, sales orders. So as, as you can see, the examiner did tell us that this was the cost driver, but we had to determine it from our interpretation. So total cost driver, I'll basically come and add this one, 500 plus 300, that is 800 plus 200 gives you 1,000. So my total here is 1,000. So what this means is that for me to get, um, for me to get the so-called cost absorption rate, I'll just come here. The absorption rate is given by this. So which will now be this value divided by this value. And I'll get this divided by this, giving me 30750. 30750. So if I want to determine the selling and distribution for each of these, I'll just look at their cost drivers. I, this one has 500 and then the other one has 300. So this one is 500, so I'll say 500 times the answer I've gotten down, which is 303,750. So I'll get that one, which is 151. 875, I'll do the same thing. This was 300. I'll go and multiply it with what I have down again. So it gives me uh, 900, then this was 200. I'll still multiply it by this. So the other overhead costs, uh, when I looked at the information provided to me, they didn't really give me the cost driver for overhead costs. So what I'll do, the best allocation I'll use, I'll still use the, what was used earlier on here at the direct labor hours, uh, which are these ones, okay? So my total, I'll just uh, try to do this, let me try to, Come here. Come here and say total cost uh, is, um, is that at three zeros, one, two, three, and then total cost driver. I'm going to use the per hours. I'll say the per hours. This is an assumption. Okay. I'm going to say assuming the per hours. So total cost driver, I'll go and add what I have here. So when I look at the total of my labor hours, is uh, a thousand plus this is one point one one thousand four hundred plus eight hundred and fifty. That gives us two two fifty. I think so. I think it gives us two two fifty. Just in case it gives us a different value, then you you can be able to tell us right there, but I think that would be mathematically right. So we can get our absorption rate, which is this. So it will be basically this value. This value divided by this, which will give us this divided by this, gives us that value. So what this means here 
is other overhead costs is a server flag. So I'm going to again look at what I have as my so-called uh, hours, the hours 850. So I'll say 850 times what I have. So this is 850 times what I have gotten, which is this. So it will give me 153,000. Then this one was 1,000, I think so. 1,000, oh, I've written 100, 1,000 times what I have here. That is what I have. And then this was 400, still times the same value. I'm just going to test them as well. See, I've got any the right figures. You just sum up all these here. So this is before 05, which definitely matches what I have. This one, summation of these values, 303750, 303750, here it gives me, so I, I match. So I've been able to allocate my, my overhead costs based on the so-called ABC. So as I have this information, I'll copy it and take it to the other side, okay? So for you can copy one by one, but for me, I'll just come here and I'll copy and paste it here. And uh, what I'll do, I'll get my total, total overheads under each product. We AT that and that, I'll cascade through, I'll get that. So that is what I basically have as my total for each of those so-called. So what I'll definitely do is I'll get when you want to get profit, basically the net profit, call this net profit uh, using ABC. So profit will be given by contribution minus total overheads. Because remember, contribution is already total revenue minus variable costs. So when you again subtract fixed costs, you should be able to get your profit or loss. So this will be this value minus this value, which gets you to 65, 437. It's cascade down here, you still will be able to get the values for the rest of the thing. So you see that the next product also gives us a very similar profit we get 65, 437, 500. And then the last product gives us 52,875. So this is the profit we have using ABC. But remember, the examiner asked us uh, to advise on to whether this organization should use ABC. So when you get down here, Back to your question, Ad, advise whether they should adopt a BC system. So what we are going to basically do is we are going to look at the profit using traditional. So I'll just copy this and bring it here. So this is this is now thousands. So I'll just try to pick this and include it. Include this. I'll add three zeros. One, two, three. Since for it has three zeros, then this one. One, two, three. Then this one. 
one, two, three. I don't know if there was one, one in one, one, one as a loss. So all of them were, okay, we have 63, 30, and 90. 63, 30, and 90. So that is what we have. Is as using. That's what we have. So we are going to compare the two. The two. So we can see that at uh, for cassava, okay, cassava flour, the profitability is sixty-five, but ABC gives us sixty-three. Um, when it comes to starch. The profitability is okay. Starch the profitability is 65. Here it gives us uh, 30. So when it comes to our so-called dairy feeds, okay, this gives us a profitability of 52, and this gives us a profitability of 90. So why what should we say about the product? What should we say about the impact of ABC when it comes to what we are seeing here? So the recommendation that would come here is one, definitely, is to advise the managing director of EUL to proceed with adopting ABC. And why ABC? Because ABC has enabled us, okay, has enabled us to see that cassava and starch are more profitable compared to what um, traditional method was giving us, okay? And it has also been able to show us that actually dairy feeds is the less profitable product because it has a lower profit. But I think you can see here, they were trying to tell us that dairy feeds are the most profitable, okay? And uh, which is wrong, okay? Which is basically wrong. So, ABC gives us a better allocation of our overheads. And that is why we, are, we will go with these values because they seem to give us a realistic picture of the true uh, profit that we are getting from our products. So we recommend them to go ahead to use that so-called uh, method of calculating. So I want to ask, uh, would Justin is still here. Justin, is this okay? Does this answer your question, the one you had that was not clear to you? Yes, thank you very much. It's now very, very clear. Okay, good. And the rest of the people, is this clear or you, uh, is there something that is uh, you would want us on this specifically? Okay, silence means we are all fine. So the part, the second, the, this part of the question also had something with um, business process ring nearing they want the ask us the process of implementing business process ring nearing now this is uh, under the topic of um uh they are basically they are called post management and strategic management accounting okay and i just want to comment on it but i'll uh, I'll provide you with notes on this specifically. Uh, basically, business process ring here, you can maybe just note it down, okay? 
uh, is basically defined as the fundamental rethinking, is defined as the fundamental rethinking and radical design of the business processes. The fundamental rethinking and radical redesign of business processes to achieve dramatic improvements. The fundamental rethinking and radical redesign of business processes to achieve dramatic improvements, to achieve dramatic improvements in critical, to achieve dramatic improvements in critical contemporary measures of performance in critical comma contemporary measures of performance in critical to achieve dramatic improvements in critical comma contemporary measures of performance such as cost contemporary measures of performance such as cost quality Contemporary measures of performance such as cost, quality, service, and speed. Critical contemporary measures of performance such as cost, quality, service, and speed. So basically, like from the word re-engineering, and they have called it business process re-engineering. So it's more about the business processes. And what you're trying to you're trying to rethink, and that's why it's called a fundamental rethinking. Okay, you rethink and redesign your processes, and your goal is to ensure that you're improving elements around your costs, quality, service, and speed. Okay, so the process itself has okay. The process itself has a process, like the business process engineering has a process to it. Okay, and usually the process starts with the developing the vision and objectives. Basically, the organization sets down what exactly it wants to do. Where does it want to see? Where does it see itself? Okay, from the vision, and what does it exactly entail to get there? The objectives. So you develop the vision and objectives. Develop the vision and objectives. And after you design the vision and objectives, now you look at your, you call it understand the existing process. So you get down to understand what are my existing processes. Because you know you can you can never get change if you don't understand where you are. So you understand your existing processes. Now, after you've understood the existing processes, the next step is called identify process for redesign. Identify the processes for redesign. Basically here, you're trying to look at, you've looked at your processes in the second step. Now here you want to look at, you're saying, I think our payment process is very slow. So we need to speed it up. So you say that one needs redesign. So you identify the process, for redesign, okay? And then after you have done that, you identify what we call change levers, okay? Change levers. And what basically this means is you're trying to look at what is the level of the process. Basically, you because you want to, you want to improve the process. So the change levers here, you're trying to look at what exactly, to what extent you want to improve that process. The third step just identifies and says payments. But here, we are trying to look at what exactly do we need to change? To what extent? That's why we're calling it identify the change levers. And then after that, we do what we call the implementation of the new process, which is our step five. So we've understood the process, we've understood to what extent now we are going to implement the new process. After implementing the new process, we then look at what is called 
make the new process operation. By operation, now you're cascading it down to the rest of the business, okay? Uh, the rest of the staff, depending on the process at hand. So you're basically operationalizing it across the entire organization. That's why we're calling it make the new process operation. Then number seven is called evaluate the new process. So the business process remiring does not only end on implementation, but also goes ahead to look at the evaluation of the new process, just to make sure that the process is meeting the requirements that were desired by the organization before it was implemented. And after evaluation, again, we don't end on evaluation, we end on what is called the ongoing continuous improvement. Ongoing continuous process improvement. Ongoing continuous improvement. That is the last step that is taken in the business process preliminary. So it is that simple. Uh, the examiner can ask you advantages, definitely you know that uh, every time you improve your processes, means that you're going to achieve more efficiency. You're going to have your staff motivated, even a little more. You're going to, to make your customers happy. You're going to reduce on costs. Okay. You're going to improve on your quality. You're going to improve on your productivity and so on. So that is uh, very, very true uh, when it comes to, yeah. Of course, advantages, this business process streamlining comes, usually comes with the laying off some staff. So uh, it is usually criticized because uh, it may lead to downsizing. It's more, it's more of a downsizing tool where some staff may lose uh, their jobs. And uh, yeah, this uh, losing the staff definitely uh, when it comes to the business, business plan, not only to make profits, but also to ensure that they are meeting the social uh, requirements. So that is uh, why it is good size. So that is just to give you uh, something to do with the uh, business process. And sometimes they, um, uh, they may, uh, you may confuse it with management audits. But uh, with management audits, they basically, they are basically just like a normal audit. But now the management audit for it, it's more of uh, looking at uh, the internal processes. It is more of looking at internal processes, looking at the entire organization to see how those processes fit into the results that the business is getting every day vis-a-vis -vis what they plan. So they are, it's more of also looking at what they plan, what has actually been delivered, okay? So they, they are looked at, management audits are looked at from the perspective of control and planning. And why is because at the planning stage, you're trying to benchmark on what went wrong last period, it's control, you're trying to understand, let's say you're, you're in media and you're trying to understand where do we go wrong and what can we do better. So you're basically trying to uh, find the variances that are at hand and then use those variances to make things better so that you don't have to uh, either underperform or be there or whatever you might want to aim at, okay? So that is, uh, so that is, all those things of benchmarking, value chain analysis, they are within that uh, topic of um, it's called cost and management, accounting, basically. I think I have a, a notes to it, so I'll be able to share with you those notes that you can look at, okay? So that is uh, what we had uh, with the question. That is what we had with the question. Um, 
it also had the, this question on uh, performance measurement. Performance measurement is another topic uh, which I share with you the video on performance measurement. And then I also want to share with you, uh, I think the rest of the videos. Now, this other one, this other one is on, this was on inventory, I see inventory management. So there was that, uh, I don't know if you went through the, went through the recording of inventory, but if you did, you should be able to relate it to this question that is at hand. Okay. This question that we have at hand here. And then this other last part uh, was on to the question on risk and uncertainty, which is also uh, one of the other topics. So what I, I just thought about it, uh, uh, sorry, last time I was not able to make it and I was not even able to, come to do the communication. So what I want to basically do to, for all those that have finished the tuition, I want to give you all these videos so that you can prioritize uh, time so that you go through them at your own time. You can say, I'm going to go through the whole week, I'm going to post it on MBC or whatever time you have. Because looking at the time we have, I don't want to keep them with me yet if you finish your tuition. I want to give them to you so you have them. And then I also want to give you all the notes that uh, are related to this. So that even uh, uh, you can plan within your time and say, I'm going to go through this. And then that will give us a good ground to concentrate on now our meetings to be so much on revision and so on. Because uh, I felt like sometimes where we lose com communication between each other, then uh, sometimes we, we take again another week again to meet. So I want to share with you so that you can basically go through. Aim at making sure that you, you've gone through nearly all the topics. Because some of questions, like I earlier indicated, some, some questions are mixed up with two topics at hand. Like, the, for example, the question we've just seen. That will give us uh, some leverage. I'm also hoping that uh, we are more frequent even uh, going forward, a little, a little more than uh, it has been. Uh, that is my hope. So that is what I can basically say, but I'm hope, hoping that uh, you've gone through the previous videos and uh, I want to uh, ask if we have, apart from because, uh, Somebody shared with me about ABC as one of the challenges. I don't know if we have any other challenge on to any of the topics that we've gone through. Uh, maybe that uh, we could just use the, few, the last few minutes. If it's something that you want me to give more clarity to, the last few minutes of what you've gone through, and maybe uh, we can call it a day. So just open the door for uh, questions. We have any, either what we have looked at or anything that you've gone through that uh, you want us to uh, get more time to it. Or a topic you went through, but it was not clear to you in terms of the videos. Yeah, yes, Samuel. Yes, I, I was requesting that if you can, if you can get a question on uh, stock levels. Stock levels. Yes, like, determinate. Like not this one. Okay, because this one, this one, it have stock levels basically. Okay. Uh, did you ha do you have a specific question? Yeah, yeah, of question. Like maybe yeah that you looked at and the question was not uh, clear to you. Like the stock levels, you do you mean things like the order level, minimum level, maximum level, we order quantity, such things. Yes. 
Okay, so do you, did you come across a question specifically with those requirements and that uh, not clear to you? Yeah, I don't still remember that. Yeah, but I came across it. I will I cross check again. When I get it again, I will share it. Okay. Yeah. But that is fine. Yeah, I think I'll, I've taken note of that. Uh, hopefully, if you can get it, then it will be good for us to go through. And uh, yeah, we can be able to leverage also on any other questions that are around inventory that uh, we might have. So you can take your time to look at the questions on inventory vis-a-vis -vis the content that you went through within the videos and where you have a challenge so that we, we can be able to have a more elaborative discussion and question uh, when it comes to uh, looking at what is the question, what is uh, what, 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 what should we expect the examiner to look out for. I thought, I thought this was the one, but this, this is this is on uh, risk and uncertainty. Yeah. So that is that that is uh, from one of you. Do we have any other apart from inventory? Okay. I hope we don't have any for now. So. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, one of you should remind me uh, in case by maybe by I want to share with you I want to share with you the video for uh, one of the topics that I wanted to go through this week. But then I want to share with you all the rest of the videos at least by by Saturday. So if I've not shared by Saturday, one of you should uh, give me a call. Any of you should um, give me a call to follow up. And then uh, as a reminder, but I'm going to work with the admin to have those shared with you with the notes, all of the notes that we have. And then from there, we can just uh, try to move forward with looking at, uh, I'll also give you, once I give the videos, we shall follow the order in which they are. That even in our discussion, we know that we have covered this, okay? But at least let's make sure that we try our best to make sure that at least by April, we've covered all the content that is within, within the videos so that we know that uh, all of May is more concentrating on two question and answer. And Shina would ask the questions to discuss next week so that we try to hire them for the class. So Edith, uh, uh, that is noted. Uh, I request that uh, the one who has said the question on inventory to share that question on inventory to one of the questions that we shall be looking at. And then maybe I'll try to share uh, the questions as well. Any other question that you look, want to look at, and then we can uh, practice. And then uh, I think I think that's a good idea. So thanks for looking then, at it. Then Samuel, another, another one. I you know I went through the recording of budgeting uh you know it's it what you you didn't finish it well and we need maybe to get a number on budgeting because i came across a question i didn't get how to go about it okay if someone says need a course outline the course outline is within the syllabus i don't know if you have a copy of the syllabus but uh yeah, I think I think one of you could share uh, in the group. Yeah, about budgeting, I do, might have done maybe a second video on it. I'll do to post check and see. But also, I think a question would help us fit in there. So yeah, budgeting and uh, inventory is what uh, is what is what has been listed here. So on budgeting, I got you can use maybe August 2019 question three. August 2019 question three. Okay, I'm going to look at that. Uh, the rest of the colleagues can also look. I don't know if they have seen the I've gotten the video of uh uh of, did I share that video uh, with you or you got it from the group? From you shared it in my inbox. Okay. Okay, fine. It's okay. 
All right, uh, let's do that. August 2019, that is on budgeting, and then you confirm on to the one of what? The one of um, the one of inventory. And look at the one of inventory, and you specifically say the one that has inventory levels. All right, then uh, we'll see how uh, we share that. So thank you so much and have the best in the rest of the day. Bye.